Okay, let's start. We're going to begin talking about the basics of the brain and the blood supply and some of the cranial nerves. Um, but uh, it's not going to be an in-depth review. We're just going to be looking at some of the basics and I'm going to be reading along and thinking about some things and it's going to be separated into a few parts. So if you enjoy it, stay with us. Okay, let's begin first with the, the basics of the skull. Let's just ask some questions and answer them. First of all, uh, the skull is composed of how many bones in total? 26. And what is the name of the cheekbone? The zygomatic bone. Now let's think about the bone in the skull that separates the nasal cavity from the brain. What is that? That is the ethmoid bone. Okay, number four, what is the thickened ridge of bone that contains both the tooth sockets, which are the dental alveoli on bones that hold teeth? That is the alveolar process. Number five, what is the bony elongated path located above the orbit and under the forehead. That is the supraorbital foramen. Number six. Which bone is located at the base of the skull in front of the temporal and basilar part of the occipital? It somewhat resembles a bat with its wings. That is the sphenoid. And I just wanted to input here, if you um, are not looking at my blog, uh, you can look at these questions at uh, myroadtomedicalschool.blogspot.jp if you want to see it anyway. And the title of this, uh, uh, this blog post is called The Basics of Brain and Blood Supply, Cranial Nerves. Okay, moving on to number seven. The bony arch at the outer border of the eye socket is formed by the union of the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. What do we call this? This is the zygomatic arch. Number eight. Which bone on the face can take on a honeycomb appearance with an ear infection? This is the mastoid the mastoid process of temporal bone. Number nine, one of the most important structures in your inner ear is the blank bone. Although it's called a bone, it does not have the typical structures associated with bones in the human body. Rather than being solid and rigid like most bones, it is made out of air sacs and resembles a sponge. That is the mastoid bone. Number ten, what is the protrusion um, from the skull, uh, which is sort of like the bumper of a car. This is the zygomatic process. Number 11, the saddle-shaped depression in the sphenoid bone on the human skull, which is a depression in the middle line of the upper surface of the sphenoid bone in which the pituitary gland is lodged. What do we call this? This is the cella tersica or turkica which is also known, this is the Turkish chair. So remember that the uh, cella turkica is what holds the pituitary gland. Number 12, the hole where the cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11 exit. This is the jugular foramen. And remember the jugular veins also exit from here. 13. The spinal cord exits where? It exits from the foramen magnum. Number 14. What is the passageway for the facial and vestibulococcular nerves from the temporal bone to the middle cranial fossa? This is the internal acoustic meatus or meatus. 15. 
The olfactory nerve is connected with which plate? That is the cribriform plate. 16. The ethmoid bone is made up of what two structures? The cribriform plate and the crista galli. Number 17. The olfactory nerve comes out of which foramen and what is the function? The olfactory nerve comes out of the cribriform plate and it, ha it is a special sense for smell. Next, the optic nerve. Which foramen does it come out of? What is the function? It comes out of the, or it runs along the optic canal, and it is a special sense for sight. Okay, the uh, third cranial nerve, the ocular motor nerve. Which foramen? What is the function? The foramen is the superior orbital fissure motor, rectus, muscle of the eye, except for the lateral muscle for looking to the side, and that is uh, the fourth cranial nerve, the trochlear nerve. Number 20, the trochlear nerve, which foramen and what function? Superior orbital fissure, it's motor, and so it's superior oblique. Okay, well, it looks like we made our first mistake of the evening. Uh, what I was saying was wrong. Let me make a correction about the ocular motor nerve. The ocular motor nerve, uh, as I said, comes out of the superior orbital fissure, and uh, we think about the rectus muscles of the eye, but uh, what it doesn't control is looking up and down, which is, uh, we say, SO4, which is the superior oblique muscle of the trochlear nerve, and LR6, which is the lateral rectus muscle from the, uh, the sixth cranial nerve, and that is uh, looking to the side. So, um, moving on to number 20, the tro tro trochlear nerve, uh, comes out of the superior orbital fissure again, and the motor uh, function is the superior oblique muscle, which moves the eyes up and down. Okay, so I will continue in the next video. Thank you very much.